This is it, football fans. You've been waiting. I've been waiting. Joe's been waiting. Chris has been waiting. All of Chiefs Kingdom and Bill's Mafia have been waiting for this. Revenge? Resuscitation? Just who cares? It's a ball game. We're going to get into it all. How the Bills and the Chiefs are going to go at it in the feature game of this week. It all comes down to this. You got to get a win. You again, you're in the driver's seat for the AFC. I'm excited about it. I know you can't tell that's okay. Joe Marino locked on <laughs> locked on Bills. TDN, Chris Clark, my normal partner. I know you guys aren't used to seeing me, but Joe, welcome. Um, I'm sorry I had to crash in on the crossover today. No, I'm glad glad you're here. Uh, glad to speak with both. You always enjoy our conversations. Bills, Chiefs, obviously, uh, two of the premier teams in the NFL, and and uh, you guys always bring some great discourse. And so excited to get into this with you guys. And and I'm excited because I really don't know where you guys sit on all this. We haven't checked in since the off season, so uh, should be fun. Folks, thanks for making us your first listen. Joe is right. It is going to be fun. For more fun, make it your second listen. Maybe it's a draft show. Maybe it's maybe it's a show that has nothing to do with either of us. Check your rivals. Maybe it's Raiders. Maybe it's Dolphins. Who knows? There's a lot out there, but thank you for doing it. We're free on every platform every day, all the time, everywhere I can think of and probably some places where I haven't. He is Chris Clark, the owner of Chiefs Corner. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics, uh, RTR Football, NFL 33, and probably a couple other things I can't remember. John Marino, TDN, Locked On Bills. That's it. Biggest story. Chris, go. Revenge game for 13 seconds. I, I don't know how you can go with any other big story for the Chiefs from this perspective. And, and really, I guess revenge would be for the Bills to get revenge on that 13 seconds uh, game in the playoffs. And really, this is a culmination of how good a game that was in the postseason last year. And that is really what's going to stick out to me is – this team, it looked like, at least from what the Bills did, they tried to bring in more pieces to try to get after Patrick Mahomes, to try to get after this offense, and to try to attack the Chiefs. Don't get me wrong. I know they have other teams that they got to play, but it looks like this is going to be a huge game from both teams' perspectives. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Chris. And it's funny. I guess the Bills got revenge last year in week six, week six for the AFC Championship loss, but then you lose in the divisional round, and that, that week, I guess it was week five, actually. Feels pretty hollow when you go home again because the Chiefs beat you in the playoffs. So it, it is a revenge opportunity, but let's face it, I think uh, both teams would rather have that playoff win, uh, which the Chiefs have over the last couple of years. And, and that leads me into my story, my biggest story for this game from the Bills angle, and, and it's Von Miller, right? And you kind of mentioned it, Chris, the Bills designing a team that allows them to compete better against Kansas City. And these are the games. This is the game you had in mind when you signed Von Miller to a six-year $120 million deal. He's the closer. He's the finisher. He's the game-changing pass rusher that you've been missing. And when you look at the recent history between these two teams, Kansas City was the better team in 2020. There's no question about them. Won 26 to 17 in the regular season, won 38 to 24 in the AFC Championship game. There was a gap. And it sucks to lose the AFC Championship game, but the pill's a lot easier to swallow when you can just simply say, man, that team's better. The Chiefs are better than the Bills. Then you get to 2021, and I thought the Bills did close that gap. They won by 18 during the regular season at Arrowhead. And then, of course, the divisional round playoff game, where if the Bills just do the right things with 13 seconds left, they advance to the playoffs. But the point being, the gap closed, and that brings us to this year. That brings us to 2022. Both teams are 4-1. and one. These are the two best teams in the league. These are the two best quarterbacks in the league. There's a lot on the line Sunday afternoon because you want that playoff game at your place, right? The Bills want to make Kansas City come to Buffalo instead of the other way around like it's been for the last two years. But to me, the most significant reason why Kansas City has been able to win in those playoff games, especially last year over Buffalo, was a lack of true elite pass rush presence. The Bills got pressure on Pat Mahomes last year in the playoffs. They just couldn't get him down. That's why you signed Von Miller. That's why you invested a first-round pick and a compression-style pass rusher like a Greg Rousseau, and we saw what he could do in week five last year. That's why you've invested recent second-round picks in A.G. Epinesa and Boogie Basham. It's for games like this. The Bills have told us we have to do more to affect Patrick Mahomes and get him on the ground. So the biggest storyline to me is how does all of that come together on Sunday? We're going to find out, but to me it's about this Bills pass rush and specifically Von Miller. I, I totally agree with you, and that's one of the keys to this ballgame, especially with the Chiefs tackles. I'm sure we'll talk about them in the next segment. For me, I, I want to take a bigger step back. Like, if you, knee deep, not just the fan base in Bill's Mafia, but the team. 
what's what's the overall residing memory of that last ball game? Because for Chiefs fans, it's Patrick Mahomes. They call him the Reaper because of that yep. ball game, and that extends everywhere. Is it like that for the Bill side? No, well, Ryan, the resounding thought from the Bills is you had the lead with 13 seconds left, then you didn't squib. You didn't squib. You didn't milk any clock. You gave him 13 seconds of two timeouts. And Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league, all right? He's the best. But the way that you play defense, the way that you aligned in those last two plays to get Harrison Butker in field goal range would have allowed any quarterback. I mean, John Beck, what in, insert whatever bad – Tyler Thigpen, <laughs> insert whatever bad quarterback in the history of the game, he would have made the same throws. And to me, you got to make Patrick Mahomes be Patrick Mahomes. Make him special, right? Don't sit there and play 20 yards off the ball and allow him to get one to, to, to Tyreek Hill and one to Travis Kelsey. The next thing you know, you don't have the lead and you're going to overtime. And so people talk about the coin toss. We don't care about the coin toss, right? Great, the, the rules are changed. We care about how the coaching staff let this team down with 13 seconds and didn't play the game the right way to finish it out in advance. That's what we're thinking about. I think it comes down to that. Is what it is. It's like the, the, the reaction to those two things. Sorry, Chris. I'm just gonna say I can't believe you brought up Tyler Thigpen. Uh Sorry, <laughs> mutual just, I'm, I'm mutual bad up. quarterback. We've both had him, so I figured it'd be no. I understand. A good I just, name I drop there. That was great. Thank you. I, th I think no. there's a lot left to this too, though, because I think it ties into the matchups and it ties into the reaction from the feeling of that game. Both these teams made moves. We're going to talk about that later in the show, but I think. At the end of the day, it is about what has become, I think, not just because of this game, but like all the history you mentioned, Joe. I think this is the funnest, my funnest, most fun rivalry, certainly in the AFC, but in the league right now, because of the quarterbacks, because of what you have to do to make exceptions for their exceptionalism, that is what really stands out to me about this game. Hard to argue with that. I think that you're looking at two quarterbacks that are playing the best football of their careers uh, so far, and... It's going to be a lot of fun on Sunday. I cannot wait for this game. And Joe, I know you're going to be there and I'm sure you're excited yeah. to be able to see that in person. Uh, but I want to tell you all about our friends over at Simply Safe. Here's a sports analogy for you. When it comes to burglars, your home is like the end zone and you need the absolute strongest defense you can muster. This is why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. It's cutting edge technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back, so you always know your home is safe. With 24-7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not at home or cannot be reached. Our monitoring experts use proprietary advanced response technology to visually confirm when a break-in is real so you can get the highest priority police dispatch. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right. This is where it's going to get fun. Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and let you give your first matchup here. For me, it's the opposite of what we talked about earlier. Von Miller's in Buffalo to do a job. That's what you have to defend against. This has been a tumultuous offseason for the tackles in Kansas City. Lucas Niang has not yet seen the field. A guy that had a significant investment in the draft that you hoped would be able to man one of your pillars on the outside and let Patrick do his thing off of them. Orlando Brown thinks he should be paid as a top five tackle, if not the top tackle. His play has not been that. Hasn't been close. And now you get Miller, you get Russo, you get Basham. The, the list goes on, and I don't think that's it. Personally, I, I'm really expecting to see some kind of trickeration with where they send guys from. That's what I'm most eager to see because I think you do have to change that up a little bit. But it comes down to can the tackles not, not defeat, not, not even slow down. Can you just not let one of those guys or all those guys off the edges wreck this game and turn Patrick into a guy that's running for his life and throwing balls when his body's horizontal like we've seen in the past, if you can let Patrick get to the point where he can still have a platform to deliver the ball, the Chiefs will be in this. If you allow that not to happen, it's on you. And for Andy Reid, that means adjustments. That means chipping. That means keeping a sixth guy in, whether it's a tight end or going to the jumbo and adding alignment, which I personally feel would be a lot of fun in this ballgame. 
But that's what it comes down for me. That's the matchup that I think is going to tell the tale of what each of these quarterbacks is going to be able to do, particularly on the Mahomes side. Joe, do you see it differently? Is there something else that's more important? No, I, I think that's big, obviously. My lead storyline was the Bills pass rush, and I certainly had the Chiefs tackles in mind uh, when I brought that up. I will say this, the the Chiefs have the best middle three in the league, right, in Humphrey, Smith, and Tooney. So if there's some liabilities potentially at tackle, but my gosh, that middle threes is, is just an exceptional uh, trio in my opinion. To me, the matchup that I'm looking at isn't necessarily um, a player versus a player. It's more situational type things, and I want to focus on the red zone and want to throw some numbers out here to kind of set the table for some of my thoughts. But you look at the Bills on offense. So far, scoring touchdowns in the red zone, 55.6%. That's 21st in the league. It's not that good, right? That's a number that is going to get better, you'd like to think. On defense, they've been pretty good, 50% stopping touchdowns in the red zone. That's ninth in the league. The Chiefs, phenomenal on offense, 78%. They score a touchdown when they get to the red zone. That's third in the league. Defensively, this is a problem, right? They're 81% of the time giving up a touchdown when the opponent gets inside the red zone. That's 31st in the NFL. So to me, red zone is going to decide this game. When you're on offense, it's touchdowns, not field goals. When you're on defense, it's field goals, not touchdowns. You got to limit the opposition to three and not seven. And that's the same story for both teams where, look, the Bills need to be a better red zone offense. The Chiefs need to be a better red zone defense. What's going to happen on Sunday, right? That's what's going to matter. Now, what can be an X factor is explosive plays. And that was a big part of why that game was tight in the divisional round. That's the reason why the Bills won in week five was because of the explosive plays. They're the X factor. That what That's what can take away the red zone dynamics that I just talked about. So far this year, the Bills have proven to win down the field in the passing game. They have six passes of over 40 yards. That leads the league. On throws 20-plus down the field so far this year, Josh Allen leads the league with 532 yards. Patrick Mahomes, 228. So there just hasn't been the downfield success or really the percentage of, of throws in that way from Pat so far this year. And then I go to the defense, right? The Chiefs defense is allowing a passer rating of 105 and a half, which is for fifth worst in the NFL against their coverage. The Bills are only allowing a passer rating of 67.8 against their coverage, which leads the league. And they were in the 60s last year. So this isn't like a small sample size. The Bills are very good at pass defense. Now, the challenge is, it typically hasn't mattered against the Chiefs, right? All the great numbers about the Bills' defense, you kind of throw them out the door because the Chiefs are able to score at will, it seems like, a lot of the times. Now, here's more data that I think is relevant here as we kind of match up these teams. The Chiefs, they're allowing a score on 41%, 41% of their drives that they face on defense. The Bills are only at 22%. The other thing is turnovers, right? The Chiefs are not forcing a lot of turnovers. They're not getting takeaways this year. Only 5.7% of their drives end in a turnover for their defense, four takeaways on the season. Meanwhile, the Bills are at 18%. They have a league-leading 11 takeaways, right? So really good numbers advantage here when you look at kind of how these defenses are matching up because for, for all of this talk about it being Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes, they're not going to be on the field at the same time for a single play. It's really about the Chiefs' defense against the Bills' offense and the Bills' defense against the Chiefs' offense. And so – the Bills' defensive numbers, like I said, they've always been outstanding under Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier, but the same success doesn't apply to the matchups against the Chiefs. That goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Is the improved pass rush going to make the difference this time around? It's a great question, and it's going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, well, fun for Bills fans to watch. I'm not so sure that Chiefs fans will be finding a lot of fun in that uh, matchup because – the big question that you bring up is pass rush, and you start looking at what that is looked at. And Ryan already talked about this. The tackles have struggled this year so far, and I think that that's a great point, uh, especially when you start looking at all the Bills pass rushers. The key matchup for me, though, looking at this game, goes back to the divisional game – or, sorry, the AFC Championship game last year, where you're in a situation where the Bills wide receivers just destroyed Kansas City's corners. And you start looking at how they played against that team and how how that defense played. And you start looking at what Kansas City has done in the offseason to try to adjust and make adjustments for that. They go out and they draft three corners. And, you know, one of them was Marcus – or sorry, was Trent McDuffie. And you saw how well he played week one before he went out with injury. I'm guessing he's back for this game. They just activated him from IR on Wednesday. 
So I'm guessing he's going to be back to play for this game. We will find out if that's going to be accurate or not. But they did go out and they got other two other rookie CBs. I'm not expecting that those rookie CBs are going to have huge plays, but they've had guys that have stepped in and done well at times this season, and I think that's going to play a big factor in how this game is going to play out. The question, the other question becomes, can Spagnolo generate any kind of pressure to take some of the pressure that off those corners that is going that they're going to be going against all those talented Bills wide receivers? All of them. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think that's going to be a fascinating matchup, Chris. And I've I've watched every Chiefs game, so I know all about uh, Rashad Fenton and Jalen Watson and Josh Williams and, and Trent McDuffie. And man, did Trent McDuffie look good against the Cardinals in Week One? And and you feel like that kind of threw off the balance of that rotation, right? With Legarius Sneed becoming one of the best nickel corners in the league, and you kind of feel like you had something going there with Fenton and McDuffie, and then McDuffie gets hurt, and now Fenton's kind of hurt, and Jalen Watson, a seventh rounder, is kind of thrust into action, kind of held his own at times, to your point. Josh Williams has been sprinkled in a little bit. I thought he played probably played his most against Arizona, held his own. But, yeah, this is a different type of challenge with the amount of spacing that the Bills are going to throw at you in, in the matchups there. And so, you know, the same's true on the other side. The Bills are playing young corners as well. I mean, Kyrie Elam, a first-round pick. Dane Jackson, a seventh-rounder from a couple years ago. We'll see if Christian Benford can go. He's a six rounder from Villanova, a rookie. Um, and so the the Chiefs also have, a, a, I would say, you know, there's no Tyreek Hill, but they do probably have more depth at receiver now with Juju, with Marquez Valdez Scantling, with Miko Hardman. It's he's going to get going at some point, right? Like it, he can't underproduce to this level all year based on what we've seen in the past. So I think there's a, a fascinating dynamic on the other side of that too, where you have a, a a nice stable of receivers against some inexperienced players in the secondary for the Bills. I think it's going to come down to that. And I, I'll talk about it in the next segment. But one of the guys that was high on my board in this last draft, probably more so than most, happens to play in Buffalo. I'm looking to see what he can get done because I think there's a unique matchup there as well. But the question really comes down for all of you that want to play daily fantasy sports is who's going to do what? Because the line right now on Josh Allen as we record this is 300 yards. Is he going to throw for more than that or less than that? Is Patrick Mahomes going to throw for four touchdowns, more or less? That's all you got to do. Make two choices. Two to five players pick and just go more or less under their lines of prize pick sets, and you're in business. You have the opportunity to win up to 10 times your money per entry just by doing that at prizepicks.com. Super easy. It's not competing against other people. It's not setting a lineup. It is simply more or less as you go forward. You can bet on things as crazy as NASCAR, pit crews, cricket, which I still don't even understand, and all kinds of other sports. But it's all about the NFL, and you guys all know that. So check it out. The entries are made in 60 seconds or less. They're super easy, safe, and the withdrawals are fast. You can do it in 30 states as well as Canada. And all you have to do is go to an app store, get the Prize Picks app, or go to prizepicks.com. Sign up there to play daily fantasy sports. You get a 100% deposit bonus. When you put 100 down, you get 100 bucks into your account just from them for signing up with our code locked on. Don't miss that. That deposit bonus is worth it, especially for this ball game because – I think these lines are going to move and you want to get your bets in early. Don't forget the promo code is locked on at prizepicks.com for up to a hundred dollar bonus. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I hinted at it before and I have to say that I, the matchup that I like for the bills that I, I'm concerned about for the chiefs, Khalil Shakir is just getting started. And I think he got a little bit of a taste. And that's one extra matchup in all of these DBs and wide receiver matchups that we've been talking about that I think could be a, a, a bigger play than it was a week ago as they come into Kansas City because I think the movement that Josh Allen has kind of weighs on where they're going. That is a guy that I think can really be the X factor. If you're going to hit him underneath on drags, if you're going to hit him across the middle, Chiefs pass defense down the middle in particular between the hashes is something I've been concerned about since the last time this team, these two teams played. That's where I'm going. And I think in the end, it is a battle. I think the passing game is certainly going to do it. I'm concerned about Josh's legs versus Patrick's ability to have some kind of protection. So right now, I do think it is very, very close, but it's a boat race. It is going to be everybody. It's it's like it's like you dub football when they have those like super power boats on, on the water, like fire up your engines and go. I think this is a, a I'm gonna call it a 37-38 game for Kansas City. All right, 37-38 Kansas City for Ryan. Uh this is my prediction. First of all, let me start here. It's insane to me and absolutely insane to me that the Chiefs are the underdogs in this game. Mahomes at home with points. What am I missing, guys? <laughs> is, is that free money? I mean, that's insane to me. That's absolutely insane to me that Patrick Mahomes would be at home. And it's not like there's 
injuries that would really move the needle, right? Like if the Chiefs are at home, they're they're dogs. That that's crazy to me. And I'm sure Andy Reid loves that, right? I mean, you want to talk about something to get the guys fired up, like you're the Chiefs and you're the underdogs. You've been the class of the league for the last five years. Um, so like I kind of said earlier, on one hand, a lot of people look at this game as Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes. But the reality is those players won't be on the field at the same time for a single snap during the actual game. So it's really Mahomes versus the Bills defense and Allen versus the Chiefs defense. And when I get down to that, I like so much more of what Buffalo has shown defensively this season as opposed to Kansas City. Kansas City's not getting takeaways. They're not stopping teams in the red zone. And you look at this secondary. They're working with a new safety tandem this year in, in Justin Reed and Juan Thornhill. There's been injuries at corner. It's about communication on the back end. And even with Willie Gay out, I mean, you're back seven. How many of those guys have really actually had meaningful game experience together? And now you're going up against a very dynamic passing scheme that the Bills are going to present to you with, I think, good players, but not a lot of time on task together. And I, I'm i concerned about that from the Chiefs side of things. And so, as I have to make a prediction here, Kansas City's looked like the more vulnerable team this year. Either team's capable of winning this game. But I'm going to lean into those dynamics that I've talked about and what these teams have revealed to us so far this year and predict a 34-28 Bills win. 34, 28, and 38, 37. Uh, you know, you look at this game for me, and you're absolutely right, Joe. I, I have to agree with you. I think that the Buffalo Bills have shown to be a better team so far this year. They're more consistent. Uh, and I say that with looking at how Kansas City has even won some of their games. I mean, the game against uh, the Raiders is, is a great example of, you know, they played down to their competition at, at times, and they were down 17-0. So, you can easily question whether or not they have the ability to, to go in and win this game. My big thing and my big takeaway is they're going to be going into this game, and I still think they're still a little bit pissed off after that Raiders game, quite honestly. Uh, and I do think that they're going to have a certain game plan in place for this team, and I think that this has been a matchup that they have been looking forward to since the last time they played in the AFC Championship game. Uh you know, Patrick Mahomes going against the Buffalo Bills, it's always going to be a good game. I think it's going to be another good game uh, this time around. I'm going to go Kansas City. Uh, I think I'll go Kansas City 35, Buffalo 34. I, I, I still think it could be a one, you know, a one point game and it's going to come down to the to the wire at the end. And, you know, the big question and one of the things we haven't even talked about is when you start looking at how points are going to matter in this game. Kansas City is still wondering whether or not they're going to get Harrison Butker back. That could play a huge factor in this game. And I'm not, I hate saying that a kicker makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. but if they had Butker against the the Colts, Kansas City might be five and zero right now. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this. Nobody cares about your fantasy team, right? Nobody. But I will say how annoying I'm a Harrison Butker fantasy owner. How annoying mm. is that every week? You know what I mean? Like I'm not dropping him. He's one of the best kickers right. you can right. have. So I'm sitting right. here like, come on, man, are you going to play or not? And I'm watching Matthew Wright hit a 59 yard field goal. But Chris, to your point, you, you mentioned uh, some motivation coming out of the Raiders game. Bill's mafia. Don't listen to what I'm about to say, but I wanted the chiefs to win the game, right? I didn't want, I didn't want to, Oh, I know a chiefs team coming off a loss. They're, they're, they got the best record of the league since 2018, which is, you know, when Pat took over as a starting quarterback, they win 81% of their games coming off of a loss. They're 13 and three. You know, they're still the best team in the league since 2018 coming off of a win, too. But that win percentage is only like 73%. So yeah. as you try you're to take the difference there. Hey, listen, guys, you. you're trying to find those margins in a game like this, right? Yep. What's those little things that you can you can have at your advantage? And I think uh, the win percentage with the Chiefs coming off of a loss being you know, almost 10% higher than off of a win, despite being the best in the league since 2018 in both categories. You know, I was I wasn't wanting to concede that 10%, to be honest with you. No. Don't blame you a bit. <laughs> every every one percent goes one point thirteen yeah. seconds. Like, can, can I just get a game that ends like at forty five seconds? Can I? Can I? Please, oh, God. you guys. I hope that you get that. I hope you enjoy the barbecue. I hope you enjoy these here wings that I'm about to enjoy. I'm looking forward to this. Thanks for making us your first listen. Check out Peacock and Williamson for their unique takes on the NFL for your next one. Go sub to Locked On Bills. Make sure you lock. You're on Locked On Chiefs already. Thank you for your time, Joe. It's great talking to you, and I hope we all feel as happy and jolly after this ballgame as well. <laughs> we'll talk again in January, I'm sure of it. We will. <laughs>
Thanks, folks. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow.